This video lesson is all about the conditions of parallel or perpendicular lines and segments. Let us start with the parallel postulate. Given a point and a line not containing it, there is exactly one line through the given point parallel to the given line. So here is the picture of parallel lines. How can we say that the lines are parallel? First, the two lines are parallel if and only if they are coplanar and they do not intersect. Coplanar means they are at the same plane and then the symbol for parallel is this symbol. The following are examples of parallel line. We have M is parallel to N, A is parallel to B, and X is parallel to Y. Parallelism is not only limited to lines but in segments as well. So here, the two segments are parallel if and only if the lines containing them are also parallel. Using this figure, we can say that segment KO is parallel to segment JN. Segment KO is also parallel to segment HL and segment HL is parallel to segment IM while segment IM is parallel to segment JN. That's a perpendicular postulate. It says that given a point and the line not containing it, there is exactly one line through the given point perpendicular to the given line. This is the symbol used for perpendicular lines. When can we say that the lines are perpendicular? The lines are perpendicular if they form right angle. If we have line M, which is intersect to line N at point A, there is a right angle created, meaning M is perpendicular to N. Let's have the theorems and the postulates for perpendicular and parallel lines. Let's start with corresponding angle congruent parallel postulate. Given two lines cut by a transversal, if corresponding angles are congruent, then the two lines are parallel. In this figure, we can see that angle A is congruent to angle E because they are corresponding angles. If these two corresponding angles are congruent, then the conclusion will be M is parallel to N. For the next one, we have the alternate interior angle congruent parallel theorem. Given two lines cut by a transversal, if alternate interior angles are congruent, then the two lines are parallel. Given this figure, we can say that angle D is congruent to angle F because they are alternate interior angles. The conclusion will be M is parallel to N since the alternate interior angles are congruent. Third one, same side interior angle supplementary theorem. Given two lines cut by a transversal, if same side interior angles are supplementary, then the two lines are parallel. In this figure, we can say that angle D and angle E are supplementary since they are same side interior angles. Our conclusion will be line M is parallel to line N since the two same side interior angles are supplementary. Next, alternate interior corresponding angle theorem. Given two lines cut by a transversal, if alternate interior angles are congruent, then corresponding angles are congruent. In this figure, we can say that angle A is congruent to angle B since they are alternate interior angles. Using the theorem, we can conclude that angle B is congruent to angle C since they are corresponding angles. Next, Three parallel lines theorem. In a plane, if two lines are both parallel to the third line, 
then they are parallel. Here, if line M is parallel to line L and line N is also parallel to line L, then our conclusion will be line M is parallel to N. Last one, perpendicular to a third line theorem. If two coplanar lines are perpendicular to the third line, then they are parallel to each other. In this figure, line 1 is perpendicular to line T. Also, line 2 is perpendicular to line T. Therefore, we can say that line 1 is parallel to line 2. Now, let us have different figures and we will answer them which theorem or postulate is being used. In this example, we have angle 1 and angle 2. The relationship between these two angles is they are alternate interior. So, the theorem being used is alternate interior congruent parallel theorem. Next, what is the relationship between angle 1 and angle 2? Angle 1 and angle 2 are corresponding angles. So we will use the corresponding angle congruent parallel postulate. Third one, what is the relationship of angle 1 and angle 2 here? They are same side interior angles. So the theorem being used in this example is same side interior angle supplementary theorem. Next, how about in this example? We have the three parallel lines theorem. Next, in here, we will use the perpendicular to a third line theorem. Next, we will use this figure. If the measurement of angle 6 is 80 and the measurement of angle 8 is also 80, what is the relationship of angle 6 and angle 8? They are corresponding angles. So the postulate or theorem being used is corresponding angle congruent parallel postulate. Next, using the same figure, the measurement of angle 2 is 80 and the measurement of angle 3 is 100. What is the theorem or postulate being used here? It is same side interior angle supplementary theorem. Next, the measurement of angle 3 is 115 degrees and the measurement of angle 7 is also 115. The postulate or theorem being used is alternate interior congruent parallel theorem. The measurement of angle 2 is 84 and the measurement of angle 6 is 84. What is the postulate or theorem? It is the alternate interior congruent parallel theorem also. How about if angle 6 is 75 and the measurement of angle 7 is 105? The answer is same side interior angle supplementary theorem. Now we will use this figure. If the measurement of angle Q is 3x minus 10, and the measurement of angle x is 2x plus 45, we will find for the value of x. First, we need to identify the relationship of angle Q and angle S. They are corresponding angles. If they are corresponding angles, we can say that the measurement of angle Q is equal to the measurement of angle S. Then we will substitute the measurement of angle Q is 3x minus 10, and then the measurement of angle S is 2x plus 45. We will use the left and the right side. We will start with 3x. We will collect all the terms with variables on the left side and all the constant on the right side. 3x is at the correct position, so we will just copy. Next, we have negative 10. We need to transpose negative 10 to the right side so it will become positive 10. And then we have 2x. We need to transpose 2x. It will become negative 2x. And then the last one, positive 45. 
it is constant so it is at the correct position so we will just copy next we will simplify we have 3x minus 2x that is x and 10 plus 45 is equals to 55 so the value of x here is 55 let us now solve the measurement of angle q using the given 3x minus 10 we will have the measurement of angle Q equals 3. And then we will use the value of X, which is 55. Substitute X, it will become 55. And then minus 10. The measurement of angle Q is 3 times 55. That is 165. Copy minus 10. The measurement of angle Q is 155. Next, we will find the measurement of angle S. Using the given, the measurement of angle S is equal to 2x plus 45, and x is 55. So we will just substitute. We will have 2 times 55 plus 45. The measurement of angle S is 2 times 55, that is 110, plus 45. The measurement of angle S is also 155. Now we can solve for the measurement of angle R. We can say that angle R and angle S are supplementary since they are same side interior. So the measurement of angle R is equal to 180 minus the measurement of angle S. The measurement of angle R is equal to 180 minus 155 since the measurement of angle S is 155. The measurement of angle R is 25. How about the measurement of angle T? The measurement of angle T is also 25 since angle R and angle T are congruent because they are corresponding. How about the measurement of angle U? Angle U is also 25 since angle U and angle T are alternate exterior angles and they are congruent. Next, let's have measurement of angle V. Angle V is 155 because angle V and angle S are alternate interior angles. How about the measurement of angle W? Angle W is 25. And then, last one, how about the measurement of angle Z? Angle Z is 155. As you can observe, the vertical angles are congruent, so the measurements are alternate. Next, using the same figure, we have the measurement of angle T is 5x plus 17, and the measurement of angle Z is 3x minus 5. Looking at the figure, angle T and angle Z form a linear pair. If they form a linear pair, meaning they are supplementary. So we will add the measurement of angle T. So in finding the value of X, we will add the measurement of angle T plus the measurement of angle Z, which is equal to 180. The measurement of angle T is 5X plus 17, while the measurement of angle Z is 3x minus 5, we will get their sum, which is equals 180. And then we will combine like terms. First, we have 5x and 3x, that is 8x. And then we have 17 and negative 5. They have different signs, so we will minus. So we have 12 and then copy equals 180. We will use the left and the right side. We will start with 8x. 8x is at the correct position, so we will just copy. And then we have positive 12. We need to transpose positive 12, so it will become negative 12. And then the last one, we have 180. It is at the correct position, so we will just copy. Next, we will simplify. We have 8x equals negative 12 plus 180. We have a like sign, so we will minus and then copy the sign of the bigger number. So the answer here is 168. In order for us to get the value of x, we will divide both sides by 8. 
8x divided by 8, that is x, and then 168 divided by 8, that is 21. So the value of x is 21.